This is Thriving Thoughts, a podcast that teaches you how to change your thoughts so you can change your life. I'm Dr. Sherry, clinical psychologist turned thought coach. In each five-minute episode of the Thriving Thoughts podcast, we will discover one lie we believe about ourselves, others, or the world that lures us into a surviving mindset. Then we'll learn the truth that leads us into a thriving thought world and to bridge the gap between knowing and doing, I'll teach you one practical thought tool you can start to use right away. Consider me your personal thought coach and each episode your personal thought coaching session. I want you to thrive, to grow, flourish, and prosper. And here's your first truth. If you want to thrive, you have to choose to do the work, the daily deliberate work of changing the way you think so you can change your life. Welcome to the Thriving Thoughts community, let's get ready to speak truth over the lies so we can thrive in any and every circumstance. Welcome back to part two of when you want to share your burdens, but your friends have problems too. In part one, episode 153, we talked about the psychology behind the lies we believe that keep us from sharing our burdens with friends. And in case you don't believe that it's possible to do so without feeling guilty or like you're burdening your friends even more, allow me to share my personal experience. I have three BFFs. They all live at least a trip's distance away, and we are deliberate about talking or at least staying in touch via text every week. Not quite two years ago, one of my BFFs lost her husband to brain cancer. She's been grieving her loss and supporting her two young sons as they grieve. In addition, they recently moved to a new home for a fresh start. A little over a year ago, one of my other BFFs, her husband, suffered a massive stroke. He survived, yet their life has never been the same. She has had to completely change careers and grieve so many losses of what they thought the future would hold. My other BFF recently had her husband leave her and her three small girls because he didn't feel like he loved her anymore. She too has been thrust into major change and is now in a rigorous schooling program to prepare her to provide for her and her three children. Two years ago, I went through an unexpected breakup, which left me scrambling in many ways. During that first year, my father was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. It was after he finished rigorous rounds of chemo and radiation, I made the decision to move from Virginia to Pennsylvania, mid-pandemic. Recently, we found out that his cancer has returned and potentially metastasized to the liver. Two weeks ago, he had 10% of his liver removed, and two days ago, he underwent emergency major surgery, hopefully to fix the location from where the cancer originated. My friends and I are each grieving and facing enormous challenges, challenges we would never be able to face if not for each other. Each of my friends makes space to help me process my grief or to simply listen, and I make space for each of them, concerning myself with their problems as much as I'm concerned with my own. Our situations are so different, but there's one element they all share, grief. Grief because life changed grief because life is uncertain, grief because our expectations have also changed. No person is immune to grief, and you will experience it in any space of change. It's like our brain stutters and goes recalculating. Meanwhile, our emotions become a whirlwind of highs and lows. The beauty of grief being common to all humanity is that each of us process it differently in nuanced ways. And our collective response to grief is far more powerful than a singular one. When we share our grief with friends, they have the opportunity to teach us what they're learning in their own. Let's back up to that lie that your problems don't compare to your friends or vice versa. You're actually correct. They don't compare. The lie is that you're attempting to compare the problems rather than connect through your responses to the problems. Brene Brown said, we are hardwired to connect with others. It's what gives purpose and meaning to our lives. And without it, there is suffering. Yes, when we isolate and fail to share our grief with our also grieving friend, we suffer. And so do they. So what are you waiting for? Stop hiding your problems under the lie that your friend has bigger problems than you. Share your grief and watch your friendship thrive. Believe the truth that friends are friends at all times. 
and you and your friends were made for adversity. By the way, I've got a texting community for people who want reminders and challenges straight from me to you about how to live out a thriving thought world. You can try it free for 14 days. Simply text the word THRIVE, T-H-R-I-V-E, to 540-369-2139 to get started. Share the love and share the show by tagging at Speaks on your Instagram story and using the hashtag Thriving Thoughts with Dr. Sherry. Until next time, remember to speak truth over the lies and you will thrive in any and every circumstance.